sore losers, why the establishment press hates Newt Gingrich Art Bell predicted, shortly after last November's historic Republican coup, that the mainstream press would do their best to turn House Speaker Newt Gingrich into the most hated man in America. Let's see how accurate Art's political punditry was. Of course, even before the election the establishment media despised the Newt. According to the Center for Media and Public Affairs in political stories on the networks between Labor Day and October 20, Gingrich drew 100% negative evaluations from reporters and talking heads. Talk about balance. Before examining how the media have treated Mr. Gingrich since last November, let's briefly sample some morsels of pre-election media vituperation. It's a record filled with contradictions, the family values candidate who divorced his ailing first wife, the avowed enemy of dirty politics who bounced 22 checks at the House Bank, and runs a big dollar political action committee that won't disclose its contributors. Gingrich himself, bombastic and ruthless, would be the most dramatic change imaginable, a change the administration can only dread. CBS reporter Eric Engberg, November 2 Evening News A lot of people are afraid of you. They think you're a bomb thrower. Worse, you're an intolerant bigot. Speak to them. You talk about the Clintons as members of the counterculture, the elitists, the left-wingers. How can you have an accommodation with the president when you read him out of the Americans, as you put it? Sam Donaldson's questions to Jingrich on this week with David Brinkley, November 13, 1994 bomb thrower. That's quite objective of you. Sam. Well, how about after the election? On election night, NBC's Tom Brokaw and CNN's Bernard Shaw wondered aloud if Gingrich would moderate his tone. According to the Media Research Center, the next morning between 5.30 and 10, CNN applied the words partisan bomb thrower to Newt Gingrich three times, combative three times, and fierce partisan once. Let us now sample some of the media's recent cogent analyses of Mr. Gingrich. The Republican Gilead against the poor, the young, and the helpless rolls on. So far no legislative assault has been too earn, no budget cut too loathsome for the party that took control of Congress at the beginning of the year and has spent all its time since then stomping on the last dying embers of idealism and compassion in government. If anything is funny in this dismal period, it's that the Republicans are touchy about being called heartless and coley. That's a riot. Have you listened to Newt Gingrich lately? To Dick Army? To Phil Graham? This is the coldest crew to come down the pike since the Ice Age. Former NBC News reporter Bob Herbin in the New York Times 225-95 It sure is exciting to think about that balanced budget everyone wants. It's exciting until you wonder how it will affect you and your family and your neighbors and your town. Then, it's scary, what Congress should do, of course, is raise taxes. It obviously won't, though, so budget balancers are left with no choice but to shrink many services my neighbors and I have come to rely on, we might ask, is big government really bad? Is new Gingrich really good? Former NBC News President Michael Gunner, January 17th USA Today column Perhaps nothing sums up the media's attitude toward Gingrich and its underlying strategy for sabotaging the House Speaker and the Republican agenda he has spearheaded better than ABC reporter Jim Wooten's November 4th statement, Gingrich's slash and burn rhetoric against Democrats has made him the poster boy for political resentment and rage, and he's proud of it. Media quotes courtesy of Media Research Center, Alexandria, Virginia. To subscribe to the MRC's newsletters, call 1-800-243-BIAS. Letters from listeners articulations non-stop great April issue. Read it from cover to cover without stopping. AI Reading, California Art is Human. CBC President Alan Corbett's excellent article, Art Pushes the Button in Last Months After Dark was a revelation. What a relief to discover that art is human just like the rest of us. J.B. Leach Long Island, New York Money Migration Regarding Your Discussion of Billionaires Giving Up Their Citizenship and Moving Out of the Country, All Moral Judgments Aside, and Looking at the Larger Picture, This Signals the Beginning of the End of Nation States as We Know Them. 
the wealthiest 5% of this nation's citizens provide about 50% of our NATI zero NAL revenues, even with all those loopholes. With the advent of advanced communication technologies and our information-based economy, the wealthy, and even the upper middle class, can live anywhere they want to live and telecommute to work. As more and more of these cash cows get tired of being milked and sprout wings, the government is going to be caught in a vice of decreasing revenues and a steadily increasing entitlement burden. We will see the governments of the world acting more and more like businesses, competing with one another for citizens. Another example of this, Canada selling citizenship and security to wealthy Hong Kong refugees. Whereas the Industrial Revolution created the nation-state, the Information Revolution will destroy same, and I might add in far less time than it took to build. Steve, KEX Country Beaverton, Oregon Inside Club Fed Regarding our recent discussion on your show of Club Fed, the federal prison I'm in here at Sheridan, Oregon, I think your listeners would be delighted to know how their federal tax dollars are hard at work punishing criminals. Yes, it's true, I am a criminal. I made a poor choice once upon a time and I'm paying the price, I won't whine about it. But I have three children growing up in this world, and it's for their sake and for the sake of their entire generation that I decided to speak out. What really brought it home for me was when my son told me his art classes at school were being discontinued for lack of funds. The very next day a memo went up here at Club Fed stating that art classes were forming and that all art supplies would be provided at no cost. That really ticked me off. Here I am a convicted criminal supposedly being punished, and I have many things that most kids growing up today are being denied. Hell, I've got it better than most taxpayers. Here's a short list of the punishment I'm forced to endure, 100% free and excellent medical care, free prescriptions, and you wouldn't believe what we can get, free, top-of-the-line dental care, free rent, nice rooms, not TV prison cells, three great meals a day, brunch on Saturday and Sunday, first-rate barber shop, free, of course, drop-off laundry service or after dark page two free washers and dryers in each housing unit, closed circuit first run movies, HBO, Showtime, and 4D cable. Channels, big screen TV room, four brand new TVs in each of the fight housing units, art room, billiard room, hobby shop, woodworking, leather craft, etc., sand volleyball court, handball, racquetball, baseball, football, soccer, horseshoes, shuffleboard, band rooms, instruments, amps, everything included, outdoor amphitheater, tennis and put-put golf at some locations, indoor gymnasium with NBA-style scoreboard, indoor and outdoor track, computerized Stairmaster life cycles, rowing machines. Bodybuilding equipment galore. Indoor and outdoor, bingo parties with $500 in prizes, leisure library and interlibrary loan program, a law library that would make F. Lee Bailey smile, special sales, sports clothes, meat and cheese, Tupperware, jobs, jobs, and more jobs from $2 to $800 a month tax-free. Art, we've got a guy here who violates every spring, just so he can come back and play baseball on the prison league. It's incredible. I don't know what the welfare people will do when they lose their benefits, but they might want to try Club Federal. It's the all-inclusive vacation of a lifetime. My position doesn't make me popular here in prison. But I'm tired of hearing the crime and punishment rhetoric. If people really want to do something about crime, then make prison a not-so-nice place to go, it's as simple as that. There are a lot of criminals in here who are laughing at you people out there. You need to wake up and take your city streets back. Name withheld by request. Club Fed. Sheridan, Oregon After Dark welcomes your comments and communications. Send letters to After Dark C slash O Chancellor Broadcasting Co., 744 East Pine Street Central Point, Oregon, 97502 or you may fax them to 503-664-8261. From the High Desert. The Haves vs. The Have Nots, The Politics of Class ENV1, or by Art Bell Iris, 
VED this fax last March and read it on the air, Art, in a conversation with a friend, I recently discovered just how much the liberals are seething. This talk about the danger of anti-abortion fanatics and of talk radio is certainly as ardent as that of the conservative gun lobby or the pro-life movement. I am coming to believe that such divisiveness is growing, and I believe, will grow inexorably to civil war. Tough stuff. It's ironic that 50 years after our victory over fascism while we remember great battles and honor the sacrifices of so many young Americans some of us actually find ourselves whispering those horrendous words civil war. I admit it, I'm getting nervous too. I look around the country at the various factions and political constituencies, and I see them getting angrier and angrier. And I wonder where it will all end. This anger is visible in the chasm between Republicans and Democrats as they shout at each other across the aisle. It's also visible in the widening gap between different moral views. But it's most visible in the growing animosity between the haves and the have-nots. How can a free country survive when the unsuccessful hate the successful? How can we survive when, at every political opportunity, class envy is escalated to hatred by those who seek power for themselves, whether it's Louis Farrakhan and his race-baiting nation of Islam or Democrats accusing Republicans of taking food from children and giving it to the rich. Can we find the way back to our common Americanism love of country and its basic values or are those basic values no longer common? We may not be able to find our way back to civility even if the country survives the current debt problems, but what if we don't survive them? What if we end up on the economic rocks? Americans don't have to look far to see the effects of economic calamity. The Mexican peso has lost an astounding 50% of its value. Since last January, 500,000 Mexicans have lost their jobs, and many more probably will by the time you read this, gasoline prices are 33% higher, food prices have doubled and meat is something only the rich can afford. The Mexican middle class has been staggered by the loss of homes and cars because many can't keep up with their payments. And here's the kicker there's a reported rise in crime because the poor are desperate. I've warned of the possibility of revolution down there. We'll see what happens, national economic problems are a quick way to find out whether the people have character. One Mexican interviewed was optimistic despite the hardship. He pointed out that Mexico's infrastructure is good and that Mexicans are a strong people with strong family ties. Can we say that about ourselves anymore? I doubt it. We're more like a nation of whiners. Just look at the outcry over the Republicans, and the majority of Americans, desire to cut welfare. Once welfare cuts are in place, I guarantee the networks will show us pictures of suffering American mothers and children every night on the evening news. And wait until the Congress tries to balance the budget. The coming media blitz is predictable, the poor and the aged are suffering, women, children, and minorities are going hungry and the rich don't care. The emotional interviews and angry statements will only make matters worse, as the gulf between the haves and have-nots gets wider and national frustration grows. Then, if there's an economic after-dark page 3 crisis like Mexico's, who knows what kind of social firestorm will result. Are we prepared to be desperate? The majority of Americans live in big cities and are used to having relatively cheap food trucked into town. Most Americans are making payments on their homes and cars just like the Mexicans. On top of that, we are totally dependent on our cars, and that full tank of gas, to get to work. Of course, if the dollar loses half its value, a lot of us won't have to worry about how to get to work. And if desperate people cause a rise in crime, our cities will become unlivable. Not a pretty picture. Republican action could forestall disaster, but don't count on it. The Gingrich crowd and their Senate sympathizers have one of the toughest jobs imaginable, face a populace used to government handouts, and say no more you are on your own. And then stick to that decision, no matter what the heat. Call it tough love or call it mean-spirited greed, or the Gingrich that stole Christmas as Time and Newsweek put it. Any way you slice it, conservatives had better be ready for howls of indignation from the Democrats, 
and the usual backup vocals from the media elite not to mention the socialist from Kansas City. Next month the haves versus the have-nots, part 2, conclusion, the socialist from Kansas City reveals a greater problem in the growing division between the haves and the have-nots, and what a leaner, not meaner government really means. I feature article Nuclear Attack on America. Who cares? By David Kupoli and Art Bell frequently discusses the ever-increasing threat of nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons attack on the U.S. by a rogue third world nation, by a former Soviet republic, by Islamic extremists, by terrorists, or even by accident. Recently he asked, the Russians are helping the Iranians to build a nuclear bomb. So why in the world should we help the Russians? The problem of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, unfortunately, is much worse than most of us realize. Which brings us to the subject of defense, the Republican contract with America makes the commitment to deploy at the earliest possible moment an anti-ballistic missile system capable of providing defense of the United States against ballistic missile attacks. What exactly are they talking about? An expensive, dangerous, and unworkable Star Wars fantasy as critics characterize it, or an essential system without which we are defenseless against multiple horrific threats, as proponents say? Let's scan the horizon and catch a glimpse of what's barreling down the nuclear highway right now, and what we can expect in the course of the next few years. The nuclear club this elite group of nations has expanded its membership base dramatically over the last 20 years, growing from 6 to 13. There are the good guys, the US, Great Britain, Israel, France, and a lot of either bad or unpredictable guys, Russia, China, North Korea, Belarus, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, India, Pakistan, South Africa. A lot more really bad guys are voraciously pursuing membership, including Iran, Iraq, Libya, Syria, and reportedly Algeria. Iraq, for instance, was roughly 18 months away from acquiring the bomb when the Gulf War started, according to former UN inspector David Kay. It gets worse. Much worse. With the breakup of the USSR and the subsequent brain drain of its nuclear scientists not to mention the Russian mafia's black market nuke trafficking third world nations no longer need to engage in lengthy, expensive weapons research programs. If they have the cash, they can simply buy the lethal capabilities they desire. Iran has reportedly purchased three tactical nuclear weapons from the former Soviet Republic of Kazakhstan. In addition, Iran is constructing and operating its own nuclear reactors with Russian and Chinese assistance. Factor in their chemical and biological weapons capability and you've got one of the most dangerous nations in the world today. Last year Russian law enforcement agencies stopped 60 Russian ballistic missile scientists and technicians at Moscow's Sheremetyevo 2 airport as they prepared to fly off to North Korea. Already North Korea has reportedly built two low-yield nuclear weapons, and is said to possess a large chemical weapons arsenal with a stockpile of as much as 1,000 tons of chemical weapons. Enticed by promises of high pay, several former Soviet nuclear scientists have contracted to work in Algeria, four have left Russia to RT, take service in India, 50 missile and weapons specialists remain in Iraq, 14 nuclear scientists are working in Iran, and many Russian scientists, according to arms control today are participating in projects in Libya. The Russian mafia is very active in trying to steal and sell nuclear technology. The going price on the black market for a kilo of enriched uranium is a cool $2.20 million. FBI Director Louis Free, who has opened a branch office in Moscow to help Russian law enforcement stop black market nuclear sales, admits he is worried about the dreadful possibilities of the Russian mafia selling stolen nuclear weapons to terrorist organizations. He should worry. As many as 23 nuclear warheads believed to be submarine-launched ballistic missile and SS-20 warheads have vanished out of a Russian nuclear weapons depot near Khabarovsk. 
Saudi Arabia has reportedly purchased AFTERDARK Page 4 Chinese built CSS 2 medium range ballistic missiles with a 2,700 km range for a whopping $50 million per missile, giving credence to reports that the Saudis may have nuclear weapons. Equipment associated with storage and control of nuclear weapons has been identified at the country's two missile bases. It's a small world after all by the year 2000 according to U.S. Intelligence estimates as many as 24 third world nations will have acquired ballistic missiles and half of those may go nuclear. That's only the N of NBC, and we're not talking national broadcasting company here biological weapons, potentially more dangerous than chemical or even nuclear weapons because of their unpredictability after use, are being developed by an increasing number of nations. Thumbing their noses at the Biological Weapons Convention which Banshee production and use of biological weapons 11 nations have such programs. Chemical weapons, considered the poor man's atomic bomb, are viewed by many developing nations as a less expensive alternative to the atomic bomb. Easier to acquire and produce than nukes, they can still kill large numbers of people. 16 developing nations have chemical weapons programs today. Libya working with North Korea on ballistic missile development while actively shopping for nuclear weapons, has found time to build a massive chemical weapons factory in Rafta and is, in fact, the world's largest manufacturer of chemical weapons. Now here's the much worse part. A direct missile threat to the United States may emerge within a decade, according to former CIA director James Woolsey, concerned that several nations currently engaged in space flight programs could develop ICBM capability. In fact Libya may already have intercontinental ballistic missile capability. Defense Secretary William Perry, when asked, would not deny unconfirmed reports that Russia has sold SS-25 ICMA-S to Libya. Since the Cold War's end, more and more nations are acquiring the technologies of ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons, as well as their ugly little brothers, chemical and biological. While the world was polarized paradoxically, while the Clinton administration has dramatically reduced the level of our armed forces, it has greatly increased the number of spots where US troops are deployed. Between East and West with two intimidating superpowers all other nations had to line up with one or the other, or at least keep a low profile as so-called non-aligned countries. But now that the world's bipolar straitjacket has been torn off and shredded, Leaders of all nations are free to dream their dreams of glory however ruthless megalomaniacal those dreams may be. Spurred on by newly inflamed regional rivalries and a heightened sense of nationalism, the arms race is on again and in a whole new way. Defenses What defenses? With such diverse and supremely ominous threats looming ahead, just how good is our current capability of dealing with them? Here are a few sobering facts. There is no way we can stop even one ballistic missile fired at the United States. There is no program underway to reduce that vulnerability. There is also no missile defense for our allies and troops overseas, except against obsolete scuds, via the Patriot missile of Gulf War fame, point to what? The Clinton administration, to create the impression of concern for missile defenses, is pursuing a single program, the Army's Theater High Altitude Area Defense Ground-Based Interceptor Program, THAD. For $14.9 billion, the administration estimates the U.S. can acquire six battalions of such missiles sometime after the year 2000, which would defend a handful of small territories overseas from shorter-ranged missiles. For about the same amount of money, argues General Daniel Graham of the Pro-SDI High Frontier Organization, we could create space-borne defenses providing protection for our allies and troops, and the United States itself. The last official estimate of the cost of space-borne defenses was $12 billion. The Clinton White House's reluctance to support effective missile defenses beyond that must be understood in its overall attitude toward things military. Defense analysts at the Heritage Foundation in Washington, DC document the disturbing trend by comparing today's US military with that of three years ago that engaged the Persian Gulf War III. Six aircraft carriers provided just under 20% of all the air sorties during the Gulf War. Of those six carriers, two no longer are in commission. 
two Navy battleships delivered 2.1 million pounds of ordnance to assist the ground forces prior to their triumphant Luauer campaign. Neither of those ships is in service. The U.S. Army relied heavily on forces based in Europe to augment its buildup in the Persian Gulf prior to the war. Of the two U.S. Army Corps in Germany, one, Seven Corps, was sent to the Gulf and played a major role in the liberation of Kuwait. Since Desert Storm, Seven Corps has returned to the U.S. and been deactivated. The Clinton White House has reduced by 80% Bush administration spending for an improved Patriot missile used so successfully in the Persian Gulf War and other far more advanced systems. And so on. Paradoxically, while the Clinton administration has dramatically reduced the level of our armed forces, it has greatly increased the number of spots where U.S. troops are deployed. U.S. forces have been spread out among no fewer than 15 United Nations and other multinational operations, including the Persian Gulf, Croatia, the former Yugoslavia Haiti, Iraq, Korea, Macedonia, the Middle East, Mozambique, and the Western Sahara. The Clinton administration's official position on U.S. military preparedness, called the National Security Strategy of Engagement and Enlargement, affirms the president's commitment that the U.S. be able to conduct two wars on the scale of Operation Desert Storm nearly simultaneously. But a report by the government's own general accounting office said the president's defense budget was up to $150 billion short, over a five-year period, of funds to pay for the two-war scenario. Moreover at a time when even the administration concedes defense cuts are reducing the nation's military readiness, the level of spending, within the defense budget, on non-military items such as the Summer Olympics breast cancer research and electric vehicles mushrooming. In fiscal year 1995, for instance, the Defense Department will spend $11 billion after dark page 5 on non-defense items, more than double the $4.6 billion the Defense Department spent on such items in fiscal years 1993 and more than three times the $3.2 billion the administration requested for 1995 to improve readiness, says Heritage Foundation defense analyst John Luddy. In fact, says Luddy, the Pentagon, plagued by huge maintenance backlogs and insufficient funds for troop training and modernization of weapons and equipment, announced last winter that it was delaying or cancelling seven major weapons programs to save $7.7 .7 billion over five years that's $3.3 .3 billion less out of the defense budget than what is spent in a single year on non-military programs. Regardless of their inherent worth, civilian projects and programs should be included in the domestic budget where they belong, Luddy says. Today, more than ever, they have no place in the defense budget. Treacherous treaty so where do these ominous trends increasing danger, decreasing defense leave us? Clearly, with events like the Japanese nerve gas subway attack staring us in the face, the United States and its allies can no longer afford to ignore the increasing threats outlined here. While most Americans have not been paying attention as the Clinton administration has begun to gut while most Americans have not been paying attention as the Clinton administration has begun gutting the nation's defenses, it is likely Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong Un, and other potential adversaries have ting the nation's defenses. It is likely Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong Un, and other potential adversaries have, say heritage analysts Baker Spring and Lawrence T. DeRita. Billions of third world dollars have been invested in missile systems, and thousands of missiles manufactured and deployed. Widely available ballistic missile systems, with ever greater ranges and accuracy, and the feverish rate of ballistic missile development and manufacturing in the third world, demonstrate a dire need for missile defenses. What, then, stands in the way of the U.S. instituting effective defenses against lethal attacks that are now seen by all to be almost inevitable? Aside from the inherent anti-military angst of the Clinton White House there is something more concrete, the ABM Treaty, says Graham remains the single greatest obstacle to defenses against missile attack on the American people, our allies, and our forces overseas. During the Cold War, the nuclear threat consisted exclusively of an aggressive Soviet Union in the grip of an insane and unworkable socio-political system, aiming hundreds of nuclear-tipped ICBMs at American cities. The strategy we adopted to counter that threat was called Mutual Assured Destruction, MAD. 
essentially, we matched their threat with hundreds of our own nuclear-tipped ICBMs aimed at Soviet population centers. The idea was that both countries would be afraid to launch a first strike, since it would be followed immediately by a massive retaliatory strike. Central to this strategy was the prohibition of effective defenses. After all, if one side had first strike capability, plus the ability to defend against counterattack, it could not be trusted to refrain from launching a first strike. Being armed to the teeth offensively and naked defensively was the essence of MAD, creating what was called the balance of terror. The big lie behind MAD was the moral equivalence between the US and the USSR the unfounded fear on the Soviets' part that the US would launch a first strike. As the Soviets well knew, the US would never have launched an unprovoked first strike, whereas the USSR might well have, given the opportunity. The moral equivalence of the US and USSR was a fiction promoted by the Soviets and, in this country, by fuzzy-headed and slash or subversive liberals who hated America. Today, even after the Cold War, that fiction persists, at least as an excuse for obtaining nuclear capability. For example, Indian Air Commander Jasjit Singh argues that India needs nuclear weapons to deter the US, saying, those who subscribe to the belief system of nuclear deterrence can only be deterred by nuclear weapons. Kill an infidel, go to heaven a big boost for space program a critical tie-in between a common sense approach to SM and space programs in general exists, says Lt. Gen. Daniel O. Graham, High Frontiers founder and director. If some and other military space systems are to come about and, by the same token, if non-military space programs are to stop devouring unacceptable chunks of federal rev the Soviet leadership was ideologically communist and atheist. They didn't believe in an afterlife, they wanted to stay alive, since this was the only life they believed in. The threat of retaliation was real and effective against them. That was then. Now. The nuclear world includes countries like Iran whose leadership sends 10 and 11 year old boys out of the front lines of battle as cannon fodder, after first giving them little plastic keys to heaven to hang around their neck and telling them that to die killing an infidel affords one immediate entrance into paradise. Threat of retaliation may have little effect on such nations. It may be a badge of honor, and even an irresistible inducement to attack. In a world where there are many and diverse missile threats, clearly MAD is ineffective. It is denying us the right to use our technology to defend ourselves, says Graham, and is drastically increasing the cost of defensive weapons. Decrying the quasi-religious status that ABM has attained as a symbol of success in the arms control process, Graham adds, we must recognize the obvious fact that we cannot both defend Americans against ballistic missiles and abide by an ABM treaty which denies us that capability. In point of fact, the ABM treaty is legally dead already. The US signed the treaty with the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union no longer exists. By international law Russia cannot be considered a successor state to the treaty since it cannot assume responsibility for all the missile sites covered by the treaty, some of which are in Kazakhstan and other former Soviet republics, not in Russia. Yet the Clinton administration insists on adhering unilaterally to this dead treaty, and has even worked to strengthen it. Ironically, even those who created the ABM treaty President Richard Nixon and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger later acknowledged that the treaty has outlived its usefulness. There are some hopeful signs that the ABM treaty can be nullified through congressional actions. Some senators have said they are amenable, even eager to nullify venues, the cost of space transportation must be radically reduced, says Graham not by 30 or 40 percent, but by at least an order of magnitude. Radical reductions such as these can be achieved, and soon, says Graham, if bureaucratic obstacles to these programs are removed. When and if these reductions are readily foreseeable not necessarily in hand we can expect a surge in commercial space ventures which will have a profound beneficial effect on the high-tech sector after dark page 6 the treaty, missile defense advocates in the House stand ready to back these senators. If the political and legal roadblocks can be cleared by a Republican-controlled Congress abolishing the ABM treaty, what course should it then follow in implementing truly effective defenses against missile attacks?
a solution one of America's proudest moments during the Persian Gulf War was watching our Patriot missiles shoot down Iraq's scuds in Israel and Saudi Arabia. While ground based defenses against incoming ballistic missiles are important, they are only a part of the solution. Especially with long range ballistic missiles, it is far better to intercept them in their boost phase, which means a space based system. The question is, how do you implement such a system effectively and affordably? Many governments throughout the world now recognize that the proliferation of ballistic missiles has made the eventual use of chemical, biological and atomic warheads inevitable, says retired Air Force General Robert C. Richardson III, a key person at High Frontier. He points out that although many countries want and need protection from missile attack, only a few major powers possess the technology and capital to develop and deploy sophisticated missile defenses. This situation suggests a radical, albeit precedent, solution. After World War II, Western European countries attained the protection they needed through alliances. The threat then was invasion by Soviet or Warsaw Pact forces. The main threat today to all nations is from ballistic missiles with warheads of mass destruction, explains General Richardson. NATO was created to deal with the former. We now require something similar to deal with the latter. President Bush proposed a $39 billion global defense system called Global Protection Against Limited Strikes. BALS was to begin in the mid-1990s, as required by the Missile Defense Act of 1991, passed by Congress after the Gulf War. Of the economy, says Graham. At a minimum, the U.S. will recapture its share of the world's space launch market which has dropped over 20 years from 100% to under 30%. Many congressmen of both parties have vigorously supported the single stage to orbit space vehicle program launched by the Bush administration. This vehicle has a high potential for lowering space launch costs. This program is vital to all military uses of space, including missile defenses. III Seoul suddenly changed from the strategically useful palliative that it used to be into something that now looks like a complete cure. Or Edward Teller High Frontier proposes putting operational control of BALS under NATO. Not only would it strengthen NATO and solve the partnership problem but it would also greatly contribute to achieving the contract with America's goal of getting effective and affordable missile defenses for the US and many other countries, says Richardson. Space spacing is a prerequisite to affordable readiness and cost, says Richardson. Space systems are by definition global in nature and once deployed are relatively free of operations and maintenance cost. NATO was created to provide national security missions that its individual members could ill afford to undertake individually, says Richardson. During the Cold War this mission was to protect NATO countries from Soviet acts of aggression. Providing missile defenses for all NATO countries, as well as for any other nations who might wish to participate, is clearly as compelling a mission today as was defense against Soviet aggression in the Cold War era. Z High Frontiers concept is echoed by the legendary Dr. Edward Teller, who urged the new congressional freshman class to make effective defenses a reality. Here are highlights of what he told them for Dr. Teller, a major objection to Seoul was that it would not work in a complete manner against a massive Soviet attack and that even partial success of such an attack would have catastrophic consequences. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, this danger has vanished or, at any rate, has diminished in a spectacular manner. The remaining danger consists in our facing an attack of, at most, perhaps a hundred warheads from a relatively backward nation. This is to be compared with a more than hundred times greater threat that we were exposed to by the Soviet Union. Thus, Seoul suddenly changed from the strategically useful palliative that it used to be into something that now looks like a complete cure. The Clinton administration did not appreciate this opportunity and decided to emasculate the essential parts of Seoul, such as brilliant pebbles, just when this type of defense became really promising. One reason for this was our treaty with the Soviet Union that set severe limits to missile defense activities. Many of us believe that this treaty, whatever its ancient utility may have been, is now an outmoded relic of the Cold War and should be terminated by international consent. In order to obtain such consent and even more in order to make the benefits of common defense available throughout the world, 
some of us are proposing that soul executed in the form of brilliant pebbles should be reintroduced on an international basis and the defense it offers made available to all participants. I want to propose that participation should depend on the capabilities of the participants. For instance, in the case of the British, it might constitute in the maintenance of naval bases, in the case of the Japanese, in the development of computers, in the case of the Russians, in their providing launching facilities, and in the case of underdeveloped nations, simply in the maintenance of observation posts in their own territories. This would not only have the advantage of less expensive operation for everyone, but also would result in a situation where destructive criticism by outsiders would be replaced by constructive criticism from insiders. I should further propose that this space-based system should be used not only to prevent the rapid employment of destructive systems, but for peaceful purposes as well. The system could be equipped to observe weather conditions throughout the world and to make reliable weather predictions as far as two weeks in advance, for the benefit of everyone. It also could be used to observe pollution in detail and thereby could convert anti-pollution measures into a practical plan. The flexibility of modern instruments including electronic computers and communications will make it possible to switch the system from the peaceful applications into the prevention of missile-based aggression practically at a moment's notice. I conclude by repeating that the above proposal is merely an example of the defense research that should be undertaken. I chose it because it is of use for enhancing peace and for war prevention, and also because it is one especially important case where the new Congress could correct serious mistakes made by the administration and thereby bring about a universal agreement for the sake of common security. Feature article continued on page 14, after dark page 7 after dark editor-in-chief Art Bell copy editor Dorothy Baker business manager Alan Corbett systems manager Brian B. Saylor after dark priest. JTS The D. Eamland Report In-Depth Explorations of Subjects and Guests Featured on Art Bell's weekly radio program Dreamland The Global Increase of Spiritual Phenomena Art, we begin to invite him in. Michael, yes. There's a dimension outside of the body, and you better be careful what you fool around with, because it can bring something to your door. Art, I do a program called Dreamland that deals with topics like UFOs and life after death. We talk with a lot of people like Dr. Raymond Moody, author of Life After Life, and others. What is your view of after-death experiences? Michael, I think there are some cases that are extremely interesting, and very valid, uplifting and true. But we have to be careful, Art. I know parapsychology inside out, I used to investigate such scientific experiments and I wrote a book about it. I understand that a lot of it is valid, but a lot of it can get into occultism, and that degenerates very quickly into New Age and witchcraft. Art, there is one aspect of the near-death experiences that is rarely mentioned, Michael. There are people who have near-death experiences that don't involve the light. In fact, just the opposite, they involve something very frightening. Michael, that's right. When they have these experiences in that tunnel, Instead of seeing an angel of light, they see demonic faces and beast-like claws heading toward them. And they usually come back and change their lives. So there are positive and negative experiences after life, just like there are during life. Art, H. I were to ask you what is the best evidence that there really is a God, what would you say? Michael, I guess life itself is the best indication to me. To think that all of this organization came out of chaos is ridiculous. What are the odds that just a mass of water and soil would produce the high-level organisms that we see all around us and that we are ourselves? I did a book on these theories of evolution, I went to Africa, to cave sites in Israel, to DNA laboratories in Berkeley, and out to Hawaii to backslash, recently aft had as his guest veteran investigative journalist Michael H. Brown responsible for breaking the infamous Love Canal story in 1980 America's first toxic waste crisis Michael's successful journalistic career has included many books, including Laying Waste, about Love Canal, followed by another book on the environment, as well as books on the Mafia, the leader of the underground church in the Soviet Union, and Evolution. His work has appeared in Reader's Digest, The New York Times, Discover, 
Science Digest, and many other publications. For the past five years, Michael Brown has worked full-time investigating and writing about spiritual phenomena in today's world. This radical change in journalistic focus resulted from his remarkable religious conversion several years back. Michael, one Friday night I was coming back from socializing in the Lower East Village of Manhattan. I was single, living in the fast lane might have had a couple of drinks. I got home, went to sleep, and was woken up in the middle of the night, probably around 3 a.m., by a very startling dream. I dreamt I was on a hospital gurney, surrounded by these luminous entities with their hands over me as if they were healing me. They had shown me a face that had materialized on my door a demonic face, elongated, with a pointed chin, goatee, and sunken jowls. It was a very living, etched face and was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. I woke up, paced around for a while, went back to sleep and the dream continued where it had left off. I asked one of the entities who it was and he said its name was Michael. I had always associated that name with angels, but he showed me the face again and once more I woke up terrified. After an hour I went to bed again, and again the dream continued where it left off. This time I was told to say vanish, and I woke up. I was beside myself. The next day, I went to see my sister in Connecticut, whom my mother had visited Michael Brown recently. My sister said, Ma left you something. What's that? I asked. She went upstairs and came back down with a statue of the Archangel Michael. That was the beginning of my conversion. I started going to church again, quick. Art, no movie has ever scared me as much as The Exorcist. Do those things really go on? Michael, yes. But with greater frequency than the movie indicates, and with greater success. There are thousands of cases of demonic possession. Most are not quite so dramatic, but I have talked to priests who have been involved in exorcisms literally as dramatic as some of the pans of the exorcist. I'm talking about physical manifestations of levitation and, in some cases, tremendously gruesome phenomena. But they do get rid of these spirits, whereas the movie kind of portrayed the devil as more powerful than the force of good. Art, do you think that's what you saw in your dream a manifestation of evil, of the devil, or of the evil within you? Michael, I think it was showing me literally that the devil was at my door. You know, when you brush against evil, it leaves something behind. All of us fool around with evil forces when we I don't want to be preachy but when we sin. And we do this as a society too. After dark page 8 just look at all this evidence. What I found, Art, was that scientists really have no idea how this could happen. They may pretend in these textbooks that they understand evolution, but they really don't. So I think that the miracle of life itself is the best evidence of God. Art, how long do you think man has been on earth? Michael, if you believe in radiocarbon dating and thermal luminescence, you could argue that anatomically modern man has been around for 100,000 to 200,000 years, and in kind of an ape man form for hundreds of thousands of years previous. Art, well, you're an investigative journalist. Do you believe all that, or do you believe man has been here only 6,000 years? Michael I don't know about the 6,000 year figure, I think that was devised by a clergyman back in England several centuries ago. I wouldn't cling to any dates. But no, I don't believe in radiocarbon dating much anymore. I went to interview Richard Leakey, probably the foremost fossil hunter in history. He had a famous discovery called Skull 1470 that made the cover of Time magazine. Then a short while later he said, whoops. We were off by a few hundred thousand years or so. That didn't make the cover of time. I'm very skeptical when they try to say something is a million years old or 200,000 years old. Art, what does the final hour mean? Michael, it talks about the final hour of our era. In the book, I report on various prophecies from around the world, a lot of them coming from the Catholic realm, including apparitions and alleged apparitions of the Virgin Mary. 
these prophecies say we are approaching some sort of major series of events that are going to break down this evil, purify us from this evil, and lead us into some type of major reawakening. Art, are these the final days? Michael, the final days implies to me the end of the world, or the end of the book of Revelations. I think we are going through parts of the book of Revelations, but I never would say we are approaching the end of the world. We are approaching the end of an era. Art, recently I had on this show Gordon Michael Scallion, who predicts earthquakes this year that will culminate with some 9.0 earthquakes in Palm Springs and going on up the coast to Seattle tremendous, gigantic earth changes. There are so many prophets predicting the same sort of thing, how do you react to that sort of prophecy, J the feeling of peace there, the tranquility, the power of God you feel like you're not on the planet earth, but somewhere between here and heaven. I watched the sun do stuff I didn't think the sun could do. Michael, something is happening in California. Since 1992, Los Angeles has gone at most six months without being declared a disaster area. You've had floods, fires, riots and earthquakes. If you look at the ten most costly disasters in American history, going all the way back to the Great Chicago Fire and the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, six or seven of these disasters have occurred since 1989 and four or five since 1992. Something seems to be afoot, and a lot of the activity is in California. What I see is that this is building momentum and building momentum until we are going to have, perhaps, one of these major earthquakes or a major storm of unprecedented proportion. I even look at this earthquake in Kobe, Japan the name Kobe means doorway of God where 5,000 were killed, and you start to wonder, is God trying to tap us on the shoulder before stronger medicine comes? Art, it's a very good question, and I must say a lot of us who are not gifted prophets still feel something, there are a lot of people in the audience that have this general sense of unease that something big is coming soon. Michael, a lot of prophets I talk to seem to suggest that prophecy is not after dark page 9 a done deal that there are many possible courses or realities that we could move toward, and that we don't have to move toward the big disaster. Michael, that's true. We believe that from the Catholic perspective also. I've been to some of these places, from the former Soviet Union to Medjugorje to South America, where the Virgin Mary gives secrets that seem to pertain to future events, and sometimes she directly prophesies. And this is what she says, these are events that will come if we continue what we are doing now. There's always that if. They're conditional prophecies, they can be changed, just like in the Bible prophesies could be changed. When Jonah warned Nineveh, it was if Nineveh would not repent it would be destroyed. And Nineveh, at least initially, did repent and wasn't destroyed. I think we're at the same place right now. Art, yes, but as I look at our present direction I see no change of course yet. It looks like we're headed straight down the highway to doom. Michael, you actually went to the physical locations and investigated some of these events regarding the Virgin Mary that the rest of us have only heard rumors and stories about. Was it real? Michael, Meljogorje, in the former Yugoslavia, is real. I've been there four times now. Art, how can you say that? What did you see that convinced you? Michael, when I first arrived at this place, where it is said the Virgin Mary has been appearing to six young people since 1981, I thought it was a case of collective hysteria for the first few hours I was there. As a matter of fact, I was disgusted at myself for having flown all that way. But by the time I left five or six days later, it had become the most incredible experience of my life. The feeling of peace there, the tranquility, the power of God you feel like you're not on the planet Earth, but somewhere between here and heaven. I watched the sun do stuff I didn't think the sun could do. I realize this is kind of a supernatural phenomenon, because the sun certainly couldn't have been doing this or else everybody else on Earth would have seen it. But it was throwing off colors, and pulsing, and there was a disc that moved in front of it, something that was shielding the sunlight so you could stare at the sun for 10 minutes without blinking. I saw other aerial phenomena while I was there, 
not UFOs, but rather more like the signs and wonders described in the New Testament. But I think the most impressive thing was just the feeling in your heart of peace. Here you are in the stony hinterlands of Yugoslavia with nothing around no pools, no TV, no air conditioning and you didn't want to leave. Art, when you ask yourself, did I really see this, or did I see what I wanted to see, how do you answer it? Michael, by going back again, I guess. And that's what I did three other times. Facts from Phoenix Yorgistus a rather confused person about witches. Speaking as a practitioner of modern witchcraft Wicca witches do not worship Satan. Satan is a Christian here a giant very much part of the Christian theology. Wicca is not a Christian religion and to us, Satan is simply a fictional character from someone else's literature. For a witch to worship Satan or use satanic symbols makes as much sense as would your worshipping Captain Marvel, Superman, or the Incredible Hulk. Michael, most people practicing witchcraft or Wicca are not evil people. But they are involved with a deception, and that's where the confusion is. Witchcraft does relate to demonic activity. It goes back to ancient Babylon, back to Cro-Magnon times in Europe when they had pantheism and worship of horn-headed creatures and so forth, and then it came through history through these strange gods and goddesses, through Egypt in the times of the pyramids, and through the secret societies of Europe and the witchcraft in Germany. Then there are the secret societies that took a foothold even here in America and now we call it Wicca and the New Age movement and so forth. I believe a lot of it does tap into a real supernatural force, but it's a force from the dark side. And it causes tremendous spiritual blindness so that they don't see the working of something is happening in California. Since 1992, Los Angeles has gone at most six months without being declared a disaster area. You've had floods, fires, riots and earthquakes, actual demonic entities. I strongly suggest that they get away from that quick. Art, speaking of getting away from it quick, one thing did once scare me. When I used to work in Las Vegas somebody had delivered to me, anonymously, an ancient Ouija board. It looked a zillion years old. Some strange things happened associated with that Ouija board, and I didn't even play with the damn thing. What about Ouija boards, are they an invitation to the dark side? Michael, it's like taking a bullhorn into Times Square in New York City and yelling, Hi out there. Anyone who wants to come into my parlor is welcome. That's what you're doing in the spiritual realm with a Ouija board. You're saying, whoever wants to come through, come on in. And guess who's going to come in first? You have to be careful with that, and with tarot cards, astrology, and so forth. These are all things that are mentioned, even biblically, as being extremely dangerous and putting you in touch with the dark side. I used to investigate this type of phenomenon to see if there was anything behind it. I've been in rooms when they turned stone cold all of a sudden and everyone got prickly skin, and these messages come through the Ouija board, and it's a big thrill for everyone. But who's sending these messages? What are the fruits, what happens to people who fool around with this stuff? The answer is that often they get into a lot of trouble. If you want to look at actual cases of possession, you will be amazed at how many of those cases started out with tarot cards or Ouija boards. You'll be amazed. Because, again, you're inviting something in that you don't understand. Art, another thing that I don't understand, and I've struggled to understand it and I've done shows on it for years, is UFOs. I finally saw one myself, Michael. I had a serious, serious experience close in. Something just floated above me, a big triangular craft of some kind. I won't go into all the details, but it scared the hell out of me. It was either technology that we have clinical evidence of demons in his interview with Art Bell, Michael Brown refers to invisible, malevolent demonic forces, something many people scoff at. However, many also laughed when Louis Pasteur, in the 1860s, tried to warn surgeons that they must cleanse their hands and surgical implements before Oper backslash Ting to protect their patients from germs, invisible, malevolent creatures capable of infecting and even killing a person. Most physicians ridiculed the germ theory, 
says science writer Jonathan Leonard. Point one surgeons performed operations with the blood and pus of earlier patients crusted on their aprons. The wounds made by their knives almost always became infected, but they were insulted when it was suggested that they might be carrying infectious germs from one patient to another. Of course, with the development of high-powered magnification technologies, science proved the existence of microscopic pathogens. Now, believe it or not, there is startling clinical evidence of demonic possession. The Presence of Spirits in Madness was written by Wilson Van Dusen when he was chief psychologist at Mendocino State Hospital in California, where he worked with the mentally ill for 17 years. After years of analyzing the nature and content of the hallucinations of his mental patients, Van Dusen came to a remarkable conclusion, what is generally termed mental illness is often actually possession or obsession with demonic forces. Van Dusen painstakingly compared the bizarre characteristics of the hallucinatory life of his patients with the descriptions of the spirit world made by the famous 18th century Christian mystic Emanuel Swedenborg. By an extraordinary series of circumstances, writes Van Dusen, a confirmation appears to have been found for one of Emanuel Swedenborg's more unusual doctrines that man's life depends on his relationship to a hierarchy of spirits. 2 After Dark Page 10 Van Dusen shows how his observations years before he knew of Swedenborg's views meshed precisely, in all aspects, with those of the mystic two centuries before. Swedenborg describes all of life as a hierarchy of beings representing essentially different orders and yet acting in correspondence with each other, writes Van Dusen. The Lord acts through celestial angels, who in turn correspond on a lower level to spiritual angels, who in turn correspond to a third lower heaven all of which corresponds to and acts into man. On the opposite side there are the levels of hell acting out of direct contact into man. Man is the free space and meeting ground of these great hierarchies. In effect, good and its opposite evil rule through this hierarchy of beings down to man who stands in the free space between them. Out of his experiences and choices he identifies with either or both sides. These influences, coming from both sides, are the very life of man. 3. The psychologist describes in great detail the lower order of entities that possess people lower developed and have heard nothing about, or it was from somewhere else, or, I don't know. To this day, I don't know what I saw. Michael, as you know, so many people have had these experiences. I hope I have an open mind, and I don't discount the possibility that a small percentage of these are extraterrestrial. But I'll say that I've seen tremendous indication that it's more of a spiritual phenomenon than a physical phenomenon. Art, it may be. Michael, something from another dimension rather than from another planet. We have to, once again be careful of the dark side. We're told in the Bible that Satan will send lying wonders in the air, we're also warned about wonders in the air through some of these Marian prophecies. I think there was one study that said as many as 8 million Americans are claiming at some time in their lives to have been abducted by UFOs. I think, if you look at the descriptions, that it's classic demonology. These are entities that have the slanted eyes, they're little, mean-looking, and leave bad effects. They leave bad odors a lot of times, they can go through the wall, and they haunt you for the rest of your life. It's not like a craft coming from some other planetary system, visiting you once, taking a sample, and then heading back for home. Rather it's an ongoing spiritual phenomenon and therefore I think it's part of the supernatural episode. I think we are seeing, art, the actual manifestation and materialization of forces of good and evil in direct combat. We're on that battleground, we're in the middle of that crossfire right now. That's why there's a tremendous interest among the American people in this phenomenon, because they're seeing it. 79% of the American people order voices areas though one is dealing with drunken bums at a bar who like to tease and torment just for the fun of it. They will suggest lewd acts and then scold the patient for considering them. They find a weak point of conscience and work on it interminably. For instance, one man heard voices teasing him for three years over a 10 cent debt he had already paid. They call the patient every conceivable name, suggest every lewd act, steal memories or ideas right out of consciousness, 
threaten death, and work on the patient's credibility in every way. For instance, they will brag that they will produce some disaster on the morrow and then claim honor for one in the daily paper. They suggest foolish acts, such as, raise your right hand in the air and stay that way, and tease if he does it and threaten him if he doesn't. The lower order can work for a long time to possess some part of the patient's body. Several worked on the ear and the patient seemed to grow more deaf. One voice worked two years to capture a patient's eye which visibly went out of alignment. Believe in miracles, according to the Gallup survey last December. Art, I know you investigated telekinesis. Is it real? Are people able to move objects or affect material things with their minds? Michael, yes. I used to think of it as just another power of the mind, some kind of electrical dynamic coming from the brain. But often it can come from the dark side, with a certain entity playing games with us, just as games are played with UFOs and Ouija boards. I have talked to priests who have been involved in exorcisms literally as dramatic as some of the parts of The Exorcist. Art, isn't there a danger, Michael, that coming from the Christian perspective you would tend to perhaps miss something that is real, and has a scientific explanation, and tend instead to label it as from the dark side? Michael, yeah, I think that can happen. None of us has the whole picture, and I probably have done that in cases. But I'll tell you, Art, when you're talking about something like the Ouija board, I've been there, I've seen it, I know what happens with that and it's not good. I don't think we should overly dwell on evil, but you do have to expose certain problems in order to find a remedy. I used to think, well, okay, if there's a devil, what do I have to worry about? There's nearly 6 billion people on the planet. What are my chances of being the next Linda Blair? I thought it was just sort of a many patients have heard loud and clear voices plotting their death for weeks on end, an apparently nerve-wracking experience. One patient saw a noose around his neck which tied to I don't know what while voices plotted his death by hanging. They threaten pain and can cause felt pain as a way of enforcing their power. The most devastating experience of all is to be shouted at constantly by dozens of voices. When this occurred the patient had to be sedated. For Van Dusen notes one peculiar trait about these presences, they are anti-religious. If voices are merely the patient's unconscious coming forth, I would have no reason to expect them to be particularly for or against religion. Yet the lower order can be counted on to give its most scurrilous comments to any suggestion of religion 5. Some actively interfered with the patient's religious practices. Most patients considered them to be ordinary living people, though once they appeared as conventional devils and referred to themselves as demons. In a few after dark page 11 freakish spirit, but in fact, there's not just one spirit. There are millions of forces out there, and when you tap into those, through sin, when you draw them to you because of how you're conducting your life whether it's drugs or certain types of sexual activity or occultism whatever it is you're going to draw with them some of this negative supernatural phenomena. And then you have to shake it. Art, do you believe in guardian angels? Michael, I do. I believe they're all around, and I believe that's the positive side of all this. You've got to be careful that it's not a deception, whether from the imagination or from another realm. But I believe this whole explosion of people with angel experiences is another aspect of the supernatural episode in progress the spiritual warfare. Art, the Antichrist. Who is he? Is he around now? Is he due to be around soon? Michael, I don't know. But there are a lot of prophecies coming from the Catholic realm that say the answer may be yes. There certainly is a spirit of Antichrist rising right now, and one wonders if perhaps there is going to be a big shake-up. There is going to be this new world order and an attempt at one world religion. Probably some kind of political leader will arise who, if not the Antichrist himself, will be some type of precursor. Art, economically and politically, Michael I would say the new world order is on the way. We are now hooked up economically, and the political changes inevitably follow. So we are headed toward one world something. In your opinion, does it have to be evil? Michael it doesn't have to be. 
but it's very dangerous because if you have anything that, continued on back cover, instances they referred to themselves as from hell. Occasionally they would speak through the patient so that the patient's voice and speech would be directly those of the voices. 6. At one point Van Dusen suggests how people can avoid having to deal with such troublesome spiritual parasites. Summarizing Swedenborg, the psychologist writes, the man who takes pride in his own powers tends toward the evil side. The man who acknowledges that he is the receptacle of all that is good, even the power to think and to feel, tends toward the good side. 7. David Kupalian 1 Exploring Science by Jonathan N. Leonard, World Publishing Co., Po. 238 to The Presence of Spirits in Madness by Wilson Van Dusen, published by, and excerpted courtesy of, the Swedenborg Foundation, Incorporated Po.53 Ibid, Po. 16, 4 Ibid, Pus. 9 10, 5 Ibid, Po. 23, 6 Ibid, Po. 12, 7 Ibid Po.16 Behind the Scenes. Digital and Analog, A Little Bedtime Story of Good and Evil BYA1AN Cometh, President, CBC Someday I Want Art to Interview More People Who Have Come Back From Life After Death Experiences. We've heard all the usual go-to-the-light scenarios with angels, cherubs, soothing harp music, and kindly elders who calmly explain that it is not your time and you must go back. These prophets of hope weave magical tales of unconditional love, order, and tranquility in the afterworld. What art needs to do is find the select few who flatlined it for a few minutes and came back to report that they didn't get to be spoon-fed by naked nymphs. I'm talking about the folks who peeked into a porthole of the pit. I know these poor folks exist, I have heard some of them testify to the suffering and degradation of eternal damnation. Just out of curiosity, I want to compare notes with people who have seen the dark side. In fact, I have a theory that the molten inferno of hell is not five miles under the earth, but instead orbits the earth some 22,500 miles above. Ladies and gentlemen, what I am trying to tell you is that if you don't live a good moral life, if you lie, cheat, and steal, you will die and wake up as a buyer of satellite space on an analog TVRO satellite and you will suffer the confusion, frustration, and tragedy surrounding the analog world of TRVO. Last month, we left off with trouble looming on the Tyro horizon, referring to our TVRO, or Television Receive Only, satellite service. Let me remind you that our primary distribution satellite is a digital satellite called SATCOM C5. We use a digital format called OATS and transmit on Transponder 15, Channel 02L. This type of service is not analog. I repeat, not analog. SATCOM 5 is digital and the embodiment of goodness and purity. It is also the backbone of the talk radio industry, and cannot be received on home satellite receivers. SATCOM CS is a very reliable service, and is run very professionally by GE American Communications, who are serious about what they do. They are a joy to do business with. Virtually all the major syndicators and networks use a form of digital satellite distribution, and most are on SATCOM C5. Satellite problems seem to arise when one leaves the digital realm and enters the dark side. We're talking about the semi-analog world of TVRO. The first question you are probably asking is, if TVRO is so treacherous, then why would you use it? I ask myself the same question every day but there is a good reason. Some of the smaller stations are not set up to receive a digital signal. A full-bore digital receiving system can easily run in excess of $8,000. TVRO systems can run under $1,000. You may say that $8,000 isn't all that much money, especially if you're in the radio business. But in today's real world, Many of the smaller After Dark Page 12 stations really have to struggle just to exist. The other reason to strike up a deal with the devil and use TVRO service is that some stations have to take digital news feeds, features and promotional spots during the night. These feeds and features find their way into morning newscasts and morning drive shows. So, with the digital side tied up there, 
they step down to the TVRO signal where an economical second uninterrupted program source lies waiting and ready to make one's life miserable. Finally, there are listeners way out in the Bunas, or in parts of the nation where some radio stations haven't realized the obvious you know, that Art Bell really does own the night and they can't yet hear Art Bell in their area. For all these people, Art Bell is available on home satellite, courtesy of TVRO. So, you're reading this and you're thinking to yourself, this doesn't sound so bad. Hey Corbett, what's the deal with TVRO? Well, let me tell you. So there we were. Little old Chancellor Broadcasting TRN just closing a deal with our TVRO supplier joining those hallowed ranks of full-service program providers. Truly, we were on our way. Our time had arrived. Life was good. And I was living it to its fullest. My complacency permeated every fiber of my being. Wow, we were going up on Galaxy 4, Channel 10, 6.2 Wideband. Not boring old mediocre narrow band, but honest to goodness, genuine, 1 4K wideband audio. Little did I know that the porthole to the dark side was about to open right in front of me. Actually, I've been around long enough to have heard the voice in the corner of my mind whispering, You just wait, Mr. Everything is wonderful. You just wait. Oh, I heard it all right. I simply chose to ignore it. There I was sitting in the office contemplating whether I should order the Chateaubriand steak or the shrimp louis when the receptionist tells me the analog satellite company is on the line. I figured the representative was calling to offer me, continued on page 15, AI Juno KINY 800 asterisk radio stations that carry CBC programs as of 5195 AI Ancho IA slash, E Ken. 550 AI Fairbanks KFAR 660 Pickup Art on Your Way Home AI Kodiak KJJZ LOL AI Kodiak KVOK 5660 Where You Can Find Coast to Coast AM and Dreamland AI Seward KSWD 950 KS Liberal KSCB 1270 Or Klamath Falls Cago 1150 AI Cordova Clam 1450 KS Salina KSAL 1150 Or Bend KB BND 1110 AL Birmingham WYDE 850 KY Lexington WLXG 1300 or Roseburg KTBR 950 AL Huntsville WVNN 770 KY Russellville WRUS 610 Asterisk or Coos Bay KHSN 1230 AL Tuscaloosa WTNW 1230 KY Owensboro WOMI 1490 Pa Allentown WAEB 790 AR Fort Smith KWHN 1320 LA New Orleans WODT 1000 280 Pa Bedford WAYC 1310 Asterisk AZ Globe KJAA 1240 Asterisk Ma Northampton WHMP 1400 Pa ENE Well LP 1330 AZ Safford Cato 1230 Asterisk MI Salt St. Marie WKNW 1400 Pa Oil City WOYL 1340 AZ Phoenix KFYI 910 Miles Muskegon WKBZ 850 Pa Beaver Falls WBVP 1230 AZ Tucson KTUC 1400 Miles Flint WFNT 1470 Pa Phillips Big WPHB 1260 CA San Francisco KSFO 560 MN Brainerd WWWI 1270 Asterisk SC Spartanburg Word 910 CA Monterey KNRY 1240 Asterisk MN Winona KWNO 1230 SC Greenville WFBC 1330 CA Grass Valley KNCO 830 Asterisk MN St. Cloud KNSI 1450 SC Columbia WVOC 560 CA San Diego KOGO 600 M and Duluth WEBC 560 SC Sumter WSSC 1340 CA Palm Springs KNWZ 1270 MO Columbia KFRU 1400 SC Charleston WTMZ 1250 CA Yucca Valley KNWZ 106
MO Kansas City KCMO 810, SD Sioux Falls KSO 1140 CA Santa Barbara KQSB 990, MO Cape Girardeau KZIM 960 TN Jackson WTJS 1390 CA Bakersfield KNZR 1560, MO ST Lewis WRAM 1380 TN Memphis WMC 790 CA Santa Maria KSMA 1240, MO ST Lewis WKBQ 1380 TN Murfreesboro WGNS 1450 CA Paso Robles KPRL 1230 MO Washington KLPW 1220 TX Austin KFON 1490 CA Fresno KMJ 580 milliseconds Greenville WGVM 1260 TX San Antonio WOAI 1200 CA a Merced KYOS 1480 MT Billings KBLG 910 TX El Paso KTSM 1380 CA Santa Rosa KSRO 1350 MT Missoula KGVO 1290 TX Houston KTRH 740 CA Sacramento KSTE 650 MT Missoula KLCY 930 Asterisk UT Salt Lake City KCNR 1320 CA Chico KPAY 1060 MT Helena KCAP 1340 UT Blandon Cuda 790 CA Quincy KPCO 1370 MT Bosman KMMS 1450 UT Cedar City KSUB 980 CA Reading KQMS 1400 NC Shelby Wada 1390 VA Bristol WXBQ 980 Asterisk CO Denver KTLK 760 NC Chapel Hill WCHL 1360 VT Bullington WVMT 620 CO Denver KNUS 710 NC FUK Varina WCRY 990 VT Brattleboro WKVT 1490 CO Vale KQMT 95.3 NC Fayetteville WFNC 640 WA Bellingham KGMI 790 CT New Haven WAVZ 1300 NC Southern PNs WEEB 990 WA Seattle KVI 570 De Rehoboth WGMD 92.7 NC Jacksonville WLAS 910 WA Wenatchee KPQ 560 FLST Oestine KFOY 1240 NC Burlington WBAG 1150 WA Moses Lake KBSN 1470 FL Leesburg KQBQ 1410 NE Lincoln Clin 1400 WA Yakima Kuti 980 FL Sarasota WKXY 930 NE Omaha KFAB 1110 WA Pullman KQQQ 650 FL Sebring WWTK 730 NE Scotts Bluff Colt 1320 WA Spokane KGA 1510 FL Fort Myers Wink 1240 40 NH Manchester WGIR 610 WA Tri Cities Kona 610 GA Albany WALG 1590 NM Santa FEK VSF 1260 Asterisk WA Goldendale KLCK 1400 GA Gainesville KDUN 550 NM Albuquerque KHTL 920 WI Madison WTDY 1480 GA Dalton KLSQ 1430 NM Roswell KBIM 910 WI Kenosha WLIP 1050 M Honolulu KHVH 830 NV Las Vegas KDWN 700 120 WI Font du Lac KFIZ 1450 IA Atumwa Clay 1480 NV Reno KOH 780 WI West Bend WBKV 1470 IA Sioux City KKSC 1470 New York Jamestown WJTN 1240 WI Stevens Point WSPO 1010 Il Boise Kino 630 New York Utica WIBX 600 
and 10 WI lacrosse WIZM 1410 IL ST Mary's KOFE 1240 New York Amsterdam WCSS 1490 WI Janesville WCLO 1230 IL Rockford WNTA 1150 asterisk O Youngstown WKBN 570 WY Green River KUGR 1490 IL Ottawa WCMY 1430 O Mansfield WMAN 1400 WY Cheyenne KRAE 1480 IL Peru WAIV 102.30 O Springfield WBLY 1600 asterisk Dreamland only IL Morton WTAZ 102.3 OK Oklahoma City WKY 930 IL Champaign WKTW 93.5 or Portland KEX 1190 for more information about IL Springfield WMAY 970 or Eugene KPN W 1120 CBC slash TRN programming and to find IL Heron WJPF 1340 or Baker City KBKR 1400 and 90 out where you can hear Art Bell on IL. Sterling WSDR 1240 or La Grande KLBM 1450 new affiliate stations please refer to KS Wichita KFIT 1330 or Tillamook KBMD 1590 the affiliate update on KS Arkansas City KSOK 1280 or Medford Cope 103.5 page 15. After Dark Page 13 This Nation from Ballistic Missile Attack Time is of the essence here. The key to our future survival may lie in who strikes first the Republican majority or Iran. Or maybe Iraq. Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell Live Monday Friday 11 p.m. 4 a.m. Pacific Program Number Guest and Topic Date Hours Cost 930619 CAI Velik I Slash Philadelphia Experiment June 19, 93 5 hours $25.930904 C John Lear, UFO September 4, 93 5 hours $26.50 931030 C Annual Ghost Show October 30th. 93 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 931123 c linda thompson slash wackle 11 slash 23 slash 933 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 931208 c richard hoagland slash mars observer december 8 93 4 hours 25 dollars and 50 cents 940108 c linda thompson slash waco 2 january 8 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940312 c AI Velik 11 slash Philadelphia Experiment 03 slash 12 slash 94 4 hours 25 dollars and 50 cents 940318 C Linda Thompson slash Waco 3 March 18th 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940408 C Charles Duke slash Sovereignty Measure April 8th 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940415 C Lori Edoe slash Prophesize and New Age April 15th 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 940427 CL Tom Thompson and Agent X slash Waco for April 27, 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940429 C Mark McCandlish slash UFOs April 29, 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940502 C L Thompson slash Waco V, Revolution. May 2nd, 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940506 C Ron Engelman slash Waco May 6th, 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 940511 C Wally Kennett slash Branch Davidian May 11th, 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents. 940520 C David Aikman slash Revolution OS slash 20 slash 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 940527 C Preston Nichols slash Montauk Project OS slash 27 slash 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 940607 C Richard Hoagland slash Mars June 7th 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940608 C Vance Davis GI slash Ouija predictions June 8th, 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940610 C Sean Morton slash predictions June 10th, 
94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940623 c sheriff arpeo slash citizens posse june 23rd 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940624 c kevin randall slash ufo c rash at roswell 06 slash 24 slash 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940630 c laurie nichols slash clinton chronicles june 30th 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940715C. Robert Papillardo slash Jupiter Collision July 15, 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 950718C. Richard Hoagland slash Jupiter Collision July 18, 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940831C. Don McAlvany slash Being Prepared August 31st, 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 940902C. John Lear slash UFO September 2nd, 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 940907 c lori pratt slash gun owners of america september 7th 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940909 c don schmidt slash the truth about roswell september 9th 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940912 c russ wagner slash virtual reality september 12th 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 940913 c dr dujeberg slash hiv not cause of aids 09 slash 13 slash 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 941003 c j wilkerson j vasquez slash kgtv ufo 10 slash 03 slash 94 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 941005 c wendy dachau slash alien abductee october 5th 94 1 hour 7 dollars and 50 cents 941028 c annual ghost show slash no guest october 28 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 941111 c lindsay williams slash new diseases november 11 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 941115 c john hoag slash prophecy november 15 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 941130 c bob fletcher slash montana militia november 30 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 941 1209 C Richard Hoagland slash Mars and Moon December 9th 94 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 941214 C George Flint slash Nevada brothels December 14th 94 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 950127 C Congressman Dorn on January 27, 95 1 hour 7 dollars and 50 cents 950210 CGM Scallion slash Quake Predictions February 10, 95 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 950217 CR. Winters slash Myers Case, UFOs, February 17, 95 5 hours 26 dollars and 50 cents 950303 C Janet Bonnie slash revived dead chicken 03 slash 03 slash 95 1 hour 7 dollars and 50 cents 950310 C Ropped. Lux slash nuclear waste storage March 10th, 95 2 hours 13 dollars and 50 cents 950317 C Michael Brown slash apocalypse March 17th, 95 3 hours 19 dollars and 50 cents 950327 C Pat Buchanan presidential candidate March 27th, 95 1 hour 7 dollars and 50 cents 950414 C P Davids J Kirby slash aliens and UFOs April 14th, 95 2 hours 13 dollar and 50 cents use our convenient order for Form on page 15 for tape orders. 1-800-917-4278 Visa and MasterCard call, 1-800-917-4278. Or mail check or money order to CBC, 744, East Pine ST Central Point, OR 97502, feature article continued. Conclusion The issue of missile defenses and the ABM treaty may be heating up in the current Republican-controlled Congress. The contract with America promises we will deploy at the earliest possible moment a defensive system capable of protecting Dreamland with Art Bell Live Sundays 7 p.m. 10 p.m. Pacific Program Number Guest and Topic Date Hours 940227 D. Raymond Moody February 27th 
94 3 hours 9403060 D Linda Howe March 6, 94 3 hours 9403013 D Professor McDaniels March 13, 94 3 hours 9403020 D Michael Linderman March 20, 94 3 hours 9403270 D Dr. Richard Goldberg March 27, 94 3 hours 9404030 D Bud Hopkins slash Alien Abductions April 3, 94 3 hours 940410 Stalker Hunt slash Ouija Board April 10, 94 3 hours 940417 D Mark McCandlish April 17, 94 3 hours 940424 D Richard Hoagland April 24, 94 3 hours 940501 D Phil Class and Stan Friedman May 1, 94 3 hours 940508 D John Ronner slash Guardian Angels May 8, 94 3 hours 940515 D Mike Rigby slash Near Death Experience. May 15, 94 3 hours 940522D Sally Rail slash UFOs OS slash 22 slash 94 3 hours 940529D Tom Van Flanderer slash Astronomy OS slash 29 slash 94 3 hours 940605DRW Whitfield slash Polar Shift June 5th, 94 3 hours 940612D Richard Hall slash UFOs June 12th 94 3 hours 940619D Dr. Chet Snow slash out of body 06 slash 19 slash 943 hours 940626D Dr. Bruce Maccabee slash UFOs June 26 94 3 hours 940703D Michael Linderman slash aliens July 3rd 94 3 hours 940710D Richard Hoagland slash the moon July 10th 94 3 hours 940717D Robert Monroe slash out of body July 17th, 94 3 hours 940724 D. John Zajic. Great Pyramid July 24th, 94 3 hours 940,731 D. Linda House slash UFOs and Aliens July 31st, 94 3 hours 940807 D. Sean Morton slash UFOs August 7th, 94 3 hours 940814 D. John Mack slash Alien Abductions August 14th, 94 3 hours 940. 8210 Dr. Carla Turner slash Alien Abductions August 21st, 94 3 hours 940828 D. Kevin Randall slash Crash at Roswell August 28th, 94 3 hours 940904 D. Dr. Goldberg slash Past Life Regression September 4th, 94 3 hours 940911 D. Rock Whitfield slash Planetary Physics September 11th, 94 3 hours 940918 D. David Scotty Life After Death September 18th, 94 3 hours 940925 D. Rich. Boylan slash Alien. Abduction September 25th. 94 3 hours 941002 D Mark Davenport slash time travel October 2nd 94 3 hours 941016 D Sky Ambrose slash alien abductee October 16th 94 3 hours 941023 D B and A Kirkwood slash St. Mary's message 10 slash 23 slash 94 3 hours 941030 D Lee Haley slash alien abductee October 30th 94 3 hours 941106 D Katharina Wilson Slash alien abductee November 6, 94 3 hours 941113 D. Jim Deerdorf slash Eats and the Bible March 27, 94 3 hours 941120 D. Dave Talbot slash Worlds in Collision November 20, 94 3 hours 941204 D. Randolph Winters slash The Pleiadians December 4, 94 3 hours 941210 Dr. Chet Snow slash Life After Death December 11, 94 3 hours 941218 D. Dr. Raymond Moody slash Afterlife 12 slash 18 slash 943 hours 950108 D. Stanton Friedman slash UFOs January 8, 95 3 hours 950115 D. Rich. Sauter slash Underground Bases January 15, 95 3 hours 950122 D. Scallion and Linderman slash Predictions January 22, 95 3 hours 9 50129D Daryl Sim slash investigation of UFOs January 29th 95 3 hours 950205D Sean Morton slash predictions February 5th 95 3 hours 950212D Dr Goldberg slash dreams and past lives February 12th 
95 3 hours 950219 D Peter Davenport slash UFOs 02 slash 19 slash 953 hours 950226 D Clifford Stone slash UFOs February 26, 95. 3 hours 950305 DJW McGinnis slash Tesla, the inventor March 5th, 95 3 hours 950312D Michael Cremo slash the human race March 12th, 95 3 hours 950319D J Maxwell slash dark side of religion March 19th, 95 3 hours 950326D Dr. Turi slash astrology and predictions March 26th, 95 3 hours 950402D Bill Hamilton slash UFOs April 2nd, 95 3 hours 950409D Travis Walt Mike Rogers slash Aliens April 9th, 95 3 hours 950416D Lee and Brit Elders slash UFOs April 16th, 95 3 hours cost $19.50 one ends control today, January 1993 to the Shield, January slash February 1995, published by General Daniel O. Graham for High Frontier, Arlington VA. Subscription free, phone 703. 671-4111, 3 The Decline of U.S. Military Strength Since the Gulf War, by Lawrence T. DeRita and Baker Spring, published by the Heritage Foundation, Washington, D.C. 4 Memorandum to Freshman Congressman by Edward Teller, Ph.D., Lawrence Livermore Laboratories, first presented at the OR North Korea, or Libya, or Syria, or Orientation Conference on 12894. Russia, or China, or After Dark Page 14 Some gift welcoming CBC slash TRN as a client. I would have been happy with just a lousy baseball cap to add to my internationally famous hat collection hanging on the wall in my office. So I greet the guy like he's my best friend. We exchange pleasantries, and then he prepares me with, Listen, we have a slight problem. You know the new channel you guys just went up on. Well, we've got to move you. Before I could inquire as to why, he hit me hard, and it has to be within the next 15 minutes. It was about this time that the visions of Shrimp Louie, Chateaubriand steak and baseball caps faded from my consciousness, to be replaced by the seething and spitting of all those general managers and program directors from all the affiliates we just told to tune into Galaxy 4, Channel 10. All over the country, Satellite dishes had been aimed, by hand, to Galaxy 4. Now each and every one of them had to be moved. Well, I'm not going to bore you by recounting how the affiliate relations department spent the rest of the night calling all of art stations, and how we found ourselves on two satellites at the same time, and how one of these satellites is at the end of its life and will actually be crashing and burning within months. Imagine that telecommunications satellites actually fall from the sky and crash and burn up. It's the dark side come to life, and I am right in the middle of it. The worst part about all of it is the illusion of order and competence. Forewarned is forearmed, and I walked right into an ambush situation that I'm not out of yet. As we go to press, the problem has yet to be resolved. True to form, this hell is dark and festering. Hopefully by next month it will be over and we'll be talking about our great new TVRO satellite that actually is on the air 24 hours a day. Hopefully. When this is finally resolved, as it ultimately must be, we can get back to some of the real issues, like what does Art really think of the conservative nightmare, Radio Free America, not to mention Charlie Democrat. Until then, keep listening and live a good, clean, moral life lest you die and wake up in my shoes. After Dark send orders and letters to CHC 744 East Pine ST Central Point Oregon 9750201 year $29.95 0 2 years $57.90 0 3 years $85.85 D I want to subscribe to After Dark. And please send a gift subscription slash tapes to Visa slash MasterCard number 2 address, city, from, gift givers complete the section, address, city, I want to order tapes number xji.out, state, zip state, 
dot zip price 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 total after dark page 15 cbc ltrn affiliate upda by julian hudson director affiliate relations thanks to all of you for dreamland become such a huge for a weekend show to climb to affiliates in such a short space i remarkable however much we show should be on your local st only due to the persistent workout by you and your neighbors who write that the show becomes a part of your listening calendar as of going to print we have just heard Unify. Clarity that KSF in San Francisco will begin airing Dreamland very soon, and I know ifs because the local pressure has been reliable and constant. Thanks again, and a quick word of welcome to these new CBC affiliates, KOMT Vol, CO 96.3 Wink, FT Myers, FL 1240 KKSC Sioux City IA.1470 WSDR, Sterling, IL. 1240 WBAG, Burlington, NC. 1150 KHSN, Coos Bay, OR. 1230 KTBR, Roseburg, OR. 950 WXBO, Bristol, VA 980, Michael Brown continued, can control the world from a single source, you have to worry that that single source is going to end up being evil. Art, Michael, how do you view AIDS? Michael, I find it peculiar that it strikes the way it does. There are always plagues that take innocence with them. I'd be a liar if I told you it didn't have some of the earmarks of a classical plague, but I know that raises tremendous ire with people, and yet it seems kind of site-specific. Art, it does, but as you mentioned, of course, it takes with it innocence. Michael, as all chastisement does. A caller criticized psychiatric and psychological profession which guard men as a mere animal, a soulless being. Michael I've got to say that there are a lot of things in psychology and psychiatry that are mislabeled. A lot of schizophrenia and other forms of psychosis, including, of course, multiple personality, I think speaks more to possession and spiritual problems than to something psychological. See sidebar, clinical evidence of demons. Calling it a psychological term like schizophrenia is just a smoke screen that prevents us from solving the problem. If we would look at the spiritual roots of a lot of the problems in our society, whether it's drug use or crime or mental illness, I think we could make real progress. Caller, Michael I have spoken to Art before regarding the enthusiasm the public has around the world with killing its children its fetuses. Do you suspect that the enthusiasm for this practice may lie in something that you have outlined earlier tonight? Art, it's a good question. What is it now, 1.5 or 1.6 million abortions a year in the US? Michael, 37 million worldwide. I think we always have to look at the worldwide perspective, because this crisis is an international one. I think abortion is the biggest problem in human history. You know, everyone is waiting for the big one or some event that will destroy a city. But every year in this country, with 1.5 million abortions that's like wiping out the cities of Dallas and Buffalo combined. So I think the chastisement in some ways is already here by our own hands. But I'll tell you, and you get this constantly through the most credible Marian apparitions, if we don't stop this blood practice, which is really nearly a blood sacrifice it's an unknowing blood sacrifice then I think you can expect some truly, truly major events to happen, including warfare in the former republics of the Soviet Union, and natural disasters in Western Europe and here in America. I think there's going to be widespread devastation though.